just want to give you an overview of today's uh, presentation and workshop. I'm going to start off with a general what is an artist statement and bio for anyone who is new to writing an artist statement and bio. And then we're going to jump into the, the drawing exercises. So get your hands ready for that. And then after those drawing exercises, I'll give you some writing tips of how to use those drawings. After that, I'll give you an artist bio template. And to end off the, the workshop, I'll give you some tools that can help you moving forward, some helpful scenarios of where you can apply your artist statement and bio uh, moving forward in your career, and uh, examples from, from my own career of how I utilized my artist statement, my bios, and my drawings um, to do my projects. And in the end, we'll do a question and answer period. I invite you to show me your drawings. Uh, you're welcome to get feedback and, and more. So keep your questions and feedback questions uh, ready for the end. So for the materials you'll need for today are some sheets of blank paper, a notebook or a sketchbook, and your favorite marker or, or pen. And I say no pencils because with pencils, I find that you kind of hesitate, you kind of want to erase things. Um, but with a marker or a pen, your mark making will be kind of permanent and you have to embrace the mistakes. And you also have to analyze why you made those mistakes within your drawings. Um, so keep a marker or pen handy. If you only have a pencil, that's okay, but I really recommend a marker or a pen. So what is an artist statement? An artist statement is a short piece of writing, one to three paragraphs long, describing your artistic practice. Typically, it is written by you, the artist, and it is in first person, so you can use words like my, I, and it may describe inspirations, concepts, techniques, and materials you use in your work and also behind your creative process. It can be about a specific artwork, group of artworks, or with time and overall body of work. What is an artist bio? So an artist biography is a summary about you, the work you produce, and your educational and or professional accomplishments to date. Um, it also can talk about what you're working on at the moment, um, if you're working towards your education, things like that. It's sort of a summary of your, your CV. Okay, so in, since you didn't see these images, uh, these are photographs that I've produced um, by using a laser printer that I've hacked. So this is a photograph uh, printed with a laser printer that looks like a drawing and painting. And these are examples of a painting using a photo transfer technique and oil paint on top. This is canvas. And this is another example of a photo transfer on canvas and oil paint on top. And this is based off of a photograph I, I captured. This was the overview of what we're working on today. So I'll be going over what is an artist statement bio, the artist statement and drawing art exercises, writing tips, artist bio template, tools, helpful scenarios and examples, and question and answers at the end. So materials. I'm just gonna hover over these slides since it wasn't recorded. And we were at, what is an artist statement? And what is an artist bio? So back to what is an artist bio, it is written in third person. So this is where you would talk about yourself as if you're someone else. Um, and usually a few lines to a paragraph in length. Um, and you can always modify your artist bio to be shorter or longer, depending on what sort of uh, application you're filling out. So I, that's just an overview. We will go into these in more detail. 
And I just wanted to go over why an artist statement and bio are important. So your artist statement and bio are vital for applications, and it also helps you ignite future opportunities. So for example, if you're not physically in a space, um, but there's an artist statement and a biography about you and your work, the audience can read it and understand, uh, connect to your work, understand your artistic process, things like that. So the statement and bio are used for opportunities such as exhibitions, grants, award applications, residencies, your artist's website or portfolio, and more. So you can really apply your, your bio and statement in many scenarios, especially when you're applying for different projects, uh, public art applications, things like that. An artist statement and biography stands in for you. So especially when you're not there, for example, um, your statement really speaks on behalf of you. So you really have to think about that when you're, you're writing your, your statement. And we'll go over that later too. It can help curators, publicists, critics write about your work, because if you've already written a bit about your work, then they can then research more into the topics that you described and expand on it. Taking the time to reflect and write about your own work may also inspire your creative process. So if you write about one painting, you might get an idea about the next 10 paintings because that writing period actually sparked a lot of other ideas. This image that you see on the right-hand side, it's an exhibition that I had in 2020 in Toronto, or sorry, 2022. And this is an example where visitors are, are engaged with the art after reading a, the statement. Uh, I was not there when this was captured, so they're actually getting close and trying to understand the process of these paintings. So we're gonna jump into the drawing exercises and I'm going to start up with like a bit of a warm up. So we're not going to go too deep into the difficult parts of your, your own psyche. So for the warm up, I just want you to grab a blank piece of paper and your marker and just follow my cues. This is going to be really quick. So don't think too much about it. Just like go with the flow. Nobody's judging you. This is, you don't have to be the best drawer or anything. Just doodle what I, I suggest you doodle. So on one page, draw a straight line. Now draw a door. And now draw a window. I'm going very quickly because you shouldn't have to think about this too much. Just really you're doodling, you're warming up, you're drawing something inside the window now. Now draw a fly. Now draw a picture frame. Now draw something inside the picture frame. And this is the last one. And so this is a really quick exercise just to get you warmed up. This was my version. I'm really curious to see yours because this could go a million different ways and it'd be really fun to see at the end what you also draw. So that was a little quick warm up. And now we're gonna get into doing your doodles for your artist statement. So for the following exercises, I want you to look at or imagine an artwork that you created. This can be one artwork, it could be a group of artworks that you made using similar methods and or materials. So just to give you an example, I'm going to work with the images I showed at the beginning. These are my image examples. So I have my two photographs that I've printed on paper with a laser printer. And I have two paintings that I've produced on canvas using a photo transfer technique and oil paint. So in this drawing exercise, we'll have a blank new page. So you're thinking about your work, 
I, I want you to doodle a personal story or a history that you feel connected to. This story or history may have inspired and or influenced you in the work that you created or the works that you've created. This may be something that you saw, something you read and or experienced firsthand. It is open to all possible stories and histories from the easy to the difficult. What was the environment or location like? So I really want you to like get deep into your memory of this story or history that you feel influences your work. What happened in this, in this moment? So these are points just to think about as you're doodling. What do you remember or know? Is there information missing? If there is, maybe you draw some kind of unknown, however you want to interpret that. What are the figures that are involved? Who were they? Are they real? Are they imaginary? What world or genre does your work live in? So is it like sci-fi, fantasy, historical? So these are just a few questions that I'm giving you to prompt you to think about a story or a history that you feel connected to because chances are it's connected to the work that you produce as well. So I'm gonna show what I came up with. And this is a doodle of me as a child jumping through the TV to eat a mouthful of cookies with the Cookie Monster. Cause I really felt that if, if I could break, break the glass barrier I could enter this fantasy world. For the second exercise, so we're going to turn the page and have a new blank page. I want you to think about the steps to you use to produce artwork, whether it be a painting, a drawing, performance, video, sound piece, or sculpture, or installation. Illustrate the steps you take to produce a single work. So with this, I want you to think about that artwork that you're looking at or the group of artworks that you're looking at or imagining. Where do you begin? Where does it end? What materials are you using at each step? So you could be drawing the materials. You could be drawing the actions that you do. If you're not comfortable with drawing, you could be listing along with your doodles. How are you using the materials? Is there something unique that you're doing while you're using these materials? What action are you performing at each step? What does your work look like or sound like? Are you referencing any art movements? So these are just a few questions you could be asking yourself. There's many more you can be asking yourself if it applies to the way you work. Basically, you will be sort of drawing a cycle, a process cycle of, of how you work. Maybe you're stretching a canvas, priming it. Where do you go from there? So I will reveal mine. So my process starts with me photographing with my iPhone. Then I'm printing with my laser printer. And I'm then scanning the image that comes out of the laser printer that I've hacked. I've enlarged that image after scanning it and I've printed it again. And then I'm cutting off these are all the little details in my process. I'm cutting off the white edges around my prints. Then I'm gessoing the image, sticking it onto the canvas. After 48 hours, removing the paper. And so, so this is 
the photo transfer on the canvas at this point, and I will paint on the surface of that transfer. So now we're turning into the last doodle exercise. So we're turning another page. And this one's gonna be a little bit more challenging, I would say. So it's okay if it doesn't come to you right away, but uh, really challenge yourself to think about this even later, a little bit more deeply. I want you to illustrate a concept, a phrase or a line, or a scene you took away from a sourced material you connected with. So something you've connected with, something that makes sense to you and the way you're working and making art. So think about a book, article you read, a podcast you listened to, a film you watched, or it could be an artwork of a historical or established artist you saw and read about. So when thinking about these sourced materials, try listing some of the materials and genres that interested you from that material. Maybe write down a quote that you've read list some key words you feel related to that practice. Remember these do not have to be related to art, but chances are the work you create is related to the material you consume. So if you're really into reading articles about outer space, chances are that is influencing your work. And you can also illustrate what you're reading. So it doesn't have to be a list. It could be a drawing of something you read. You're really trying to break down these concepts that you've absorbed throughout the day or on your morning walk while you, maybe you were listening to a podcast and you really enjoyed it. And I have a little tip on the side that if you're looking to consume material to help strengthen your artistic research, uh, a good idea is to like search keywords um, that are related to your art practice at the local library. It's that's how I started. I I was searching uh, materials on technology and media uh, back in during my thesis in two thousand eight, and I came upon Marshall McLuhan, and that itself sparked a whole bunch of other books that I wanted to read. So the library is a really great place to start. So my little doodle here, um, it's more text-based in this one. Uh, I took a idea from the book Liquid Love by Zygmunt Bauman, uh, where he talks about uh, individuals in a community, how things in like the virtual world on the screen is kind of occupying our reality and individuals are losing a sense of community in the real world um, while focusing more on the virtual world. And there's a whole lot of concepts. It's an intense book. And what I took away with it were these four words and how they kind of work with each other. So this was my way of making sense of this book for me. So I know the last one was a challenging one. So it's something I would really encourage you to think about and take away with you today to go into more deeper. Um, but essentially what you have after doing these three exercises is a vision board for your artist statement. So I want you to look at the three drawings that you've produced as a group. These visual cues, lists, and notes that you've produced very quickly. I didn't give you much time. Uh, I typically spend five minutes on a doodle, so I, for time reasons, I did not give you that today. Um, but you can quickly now start to write your artist statement from those three images. Uh, so I've sort of broken down the artist statement into two paragraphs, but um, you can do three paragraphs. Uh, artist statement is usually just a page long. Uh, mine is just two paragraphs. So for this exercise, I want you to combine the drawings of exercise one and exercise three would be your paragraph one. This would become sort of your thesis statement. It describes how and what and why 
you make work. So I want you to look at your first and third drawing and see if you have a relation to your work with those two drawings um, conceptually with your work. And paragraph two becomes a combination of your, the drawing exercise two and three. So here you're just gonna describe the materials that you're using, how this may relate to your thesis. Um, this may include art, an artistic or other influences, movements related to your work. And it also describes what your work may look like or feel like or sound like. So this is combining the first, the second drawing and the third drawing. So these are just my suggestions for the first paragraph and the second paragraph. Um, but essentially you need to make the statement and stru structure work for you and how you work. But based on these two ideas, these are some points to think about when you're going to now write based on your doodles. Your artist statement is written in first person, just a reminder, so you can talk about it uh, when you're referring to yourself in this sense. It's one, two, three paragraphs long, no more than one page. You wanna think about who your audience is and typically it's someone who knows nothing about art. So you really wanna use very simple, very concise, honest and straightforward language. I want you to think about what is your work about? What ideas are we exploring? How can you make your work easy and accessible to understand? Would you be interested in seeing your work after reading your statement? So that one will make you want to edit your statement a lot after writing it a first few times. Avoid using jargon and art speak. Uh, this can confuse your audience and readers. And lastly, look up examples of statements and bios of artists that you admire and or work in a very simpler, uh, similar fashion as you do. So some places to look are like Artsy, the National Gallery of Canada, and Google Art. Uh, often you can find artist bios and artist statements uh, in, under different exhibitions. So as an example, I'm showing you my three drawings from the three drawing exercises. So I have my background, my story. It's this kind of imaginary experience that I had as a child. And then in the middle, I have my process, my materials, and sort of my inspirations. And the last one, I have this kind of more complicated idea from a book that I simplified. So the, the history, the context, what could become my thesis. So looking at these three drawings as my first and second paragraph, this is how I came up with it. Um, this is my example artist statement. This is what I use on my website. So as a kid, I used to believe people were living inside my television set. How else could Mr. Dress Up appear through the tube? If I was allowed to break the glass barrier between Sesame Street and my living room, I could have enjoyed mouthfuls of cookies. Despite my fantasy of jumping through a looking glass, I soon learned that was not the reality. My television was old. It began to show some glitch-like symptoms, automatically changing channels and distorting colors and figures. Blurring the boundaries between a window and a screen, I utilize smartphones, laser printers, software, and paint to create lens-based works full of color and errors. I push the limits of print technology to the point it releases data, photographs captured from life, impression impressionistically. I use paint, loose chromatic and illusor loose, sorry, illusory qualities on thinly transferred scenes to revisit unseen and internal. Juxtaposed layers of the real and abstract explore the nature of collective memory shaped by physical and virtual realities. Caught between security and freedom, vibrant, eroded, and restored, my works invite an exchange of perspectives. And with my example artist statement, uh, I sometimes do include that doodle 
of the more complicated uh, thought that I've simplified from the book of Sigmund Bauman. Uh, I use this drawing on my website. I include it on my portfolio. Um, and where I can, I include it in my project proposals as well. So that statement was not something I wrote on my first try, but as you can see from my drawings to my statement, the ideas that are in my drawings came through in my writing. So I have a few writing tips for you. Imagine you're explaining your practice to someone unaware of the art world. So if you're describing your drawings verbally to someone, maybe try imagining you're talking to someone and record yourself describing your drawings. Chances are you're verbally saying your artist statement. Keep language simple. So I keep saying that uh, it's because it can get pretty complicated when you're trying to simplify uh, concepts from books but really try to write in a way that also you understand it and someone who knows nothing about art and nothing about the book you read, uh, that they can understand what you're writing as well. Review your artist statement and bio as a whole. Does it read like a story? Uh, if it does, it's a good sign that your, your writing is very readable and approachable. Uh, I've suggested you use the Grammarly app um, this is a free application online. Uh, you can upgrade by paying. Uh, I have not done that. <laughs> um, but it's a great way to copy and paste what you've written so far and see where you need some work. It'll give you some suggestions. It'll tell you where to place commas, things like that. Have a friend read your statement um, and see your work at the same time. So this way they can see if what you're writing matches what you're painting or photographing or producing in a video, things like that. Do not get discouraged if your statement is not complete or perfect. Like I said, that statement that I read right now was not what that is when I first started. Um, it evolves, it changes, uh, and it changes with your creative journey. So it's something you can always revisit, something you can tweak, maybe you'll get some feedback and you'll take that feedback and adjust it. So it, it's not a permanent, permanent statement. It doesn't have to be. You can keep modifying as you move on in your artistic journey. And the last point is welcome feedback as it comes. Don't take it too personally. Uh, just take it positively that it's gonna improve your writing. Um, take notes, reassess. How can you make your statement better? Reflect your work. So the artist bio, uh, I would say this is much easier after doing the artist statement. Um, I've actually created a template for you based on examples I found online. And this is something I did for myself when I went to write my artist bio. So on another blank piece of paper, you're basically, basically gonna fill in your journey. So first point, you're gonna write your first and last name, or if you have an artist alias name, or you work in a duo or a collective, your collective's name. Two, you're gonna write your year and place of birth. If it's something that applies to you, if you're a collective, maybe not so much you would fill this in. And I like just like to say that you can also leave any of these areas blank. It's perfectly fine. Um, this is a template based on other artist bios I observed on Artsy and other websites when I was writing mine. So three, you're gonna list your professions. Are you a visual artist, a sound artist? Are you a scientist? Are you a teacher? Um, this can be any kind of profession that you, you do. If, it, if it's related to what you do as an artist and you wanna share it, uh, I recommend you share it there. Number four, description of what you produce. So number four is actually pulled from your artist statement. So you can pick two lines that describe your materials, if you're working in photography, if you're working in sculpture, and a brief idea of what your work is about. So just two lines from your statement. Number five would be your education. So whether if you're self-taught, 
or you did a few internships, or you're working towards your college or university degree, you can list that there. Number six would be awards. Number seven, any grants. Number eight, any artist residencies. And just a reminder, it's perfectly fine if any of these are blank. Um, a lot of these were blank for me when I started. Number nine would be group exhibitions. And for this one, you want to list it in ascending order. So exhibitions you had in 2020, 2021, 2022. And you want to keep it to the most important ones because the number of exhibitions you do can be a lot after some time. Number 10 would be solo exhibitions. 11, any public artworks you've done. And 12 would be anything else, anything related to the experiences of your personal creative journey. So when I was starting as an artist, I was actually working in theater. So instead of having solo exhibitions, I actually had theater productions that I worked on. So I included that in my bio to begin. Uh, that's what I was working on at the time. So that's what I shared. <laughs> And 13, what are you currently working towards or presenting? So this is a great way to share a bit of news. Maybe you have an exhibition coming up. Maybe you're about to start a residency. Maybe you're about to be presenting a public artwork. Maybe there is an artwork outside that is visible for the public to see and you want to draw in audiences to go there. So after filling this form, you essentially have completed your artist bio. So I've this page is going to become very colorful as I, I show how this comes together. Um, so in the first line, I've grouped my first name, the year of birth, and my profession. So Jasper Birdie, born in 1988, Toronto, is a Canadian artist. And then I have my two lines for my artist statement, who combines photography and painting by experimenting with modern technologies. Through programming, print, and paint, her practice reconstructs and examines boundaries in virtual and physical worlds. Notice that this is in third person. Um, I'm referring to myself as someone else. Number five, I've included my education. Uh, and you'll notice that this is in ascending order. So Birdie completed her BFA in drawing and painting from OCAD University 2010 a museum internship at the Peggy Guggenheim Collection 2011, and a Master's of Arts Management from Instituto Europeo de Design, IED, in 2013. And I just want to mention here, I've put these in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this sort of order, but just like your artist statement, you're more than welcome to mix up the order of your bio as well, if it makes sense for your journey and your biography. Um, you'll see that I've mixed up a few of the last points at the end. So here I have my awards, my grants and artist residencies grouped together. Her works have earned recognition from Ontario Arts Council, the Canada Council for the Arts, as well as several awards, including the 2013 Arte Laguna Solo Exhibition Prize, the 2017-18 Fondazione Biblioteca La Maza Artist Residency, BLM Stonefly Art Award, the 2020-21 Fondazione Culturale San Fidele Visual Arts Fellowship, and Martini International Award. It's a lot of words in my bio. Uh, that is because some of these titles in Italian, they're much easier to read than in English. Um, but when you read other examples uh, on Artsy and other exhibitions, this is kind of what happens with doing international exhibitions. The, the bio gets a bit wordy. <laughs> in 2017, Bertie co-created the exhibition Command Alternative Escape for the opening week of the Venice International Art Biennale. So this is an example of an other uh, in number 12. And then I have my solo exhibitions. I used to have group exhibitions in my bio, uh, but obviously it was a 
going to become very long. So uh, I ended up removing them and just sticking to solo exhibitions. Um, but if there is a very notable group exhibition that I really wanted to mention, I could also include that too. Um, so during the 2018 Berlin Art Week, she showed in a curated solo exhibition transfer recall. In 2020, Bertie presented Can I Play Outside, a solo exhibition supported by the RBC Foundation Emerging Artist Residency at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. In 2022, she exhibited Eyes Looking Without Seeing, a solo show at the Women's Art Association of Canada in Toronto. In 2023, her works traveled to Oki que guardo no senza vedere, which is Eyes Looking Without Seeing, a curated solo exhibition at Fondazione Vittorio Lenezio in Italy. And so with that last uh, bit, you can see I've mentioned an artist residency within my exhibitions. And my last bit of news uh, at the end, currently Jasper Birdie's public artwork, 11 hours, two minutes, is visible at the Canada Line Lansdowne Station, presented by Richmond Art Gallery for the 2023 Capture Photography Festival in Vancouver. So now you see this whole rainbow page of the bio, um, breaking down how I've moved these different groups to flow for, for my personal career. And you can do the same too. So you can make these pieces kind of fit together according to the dates uh, in which you've completed uh, different aspects in your career. So this is just an image of my bio without all the rainbow colors. Uh, you can see that I also have an artist portrait. I included that just to share with you that it's always a great idea to have a photograph of yourself because often when you're applying for awards and residencies, sometimes they ask you for a photo in case you receive an award or the residency, they like to share news about you, the artist. So have a friend take a photograph of yourself. And I mentioned here in the title that this is an example artist bio long. Um, so the form that I've given you gives you all the tools to write a very long artist bio about yourself. And what you can do from there is eliminate information, uh, make it shorter, include the very key information that you want to share with an open call. Sometimes they have like word limits. And so you, you need to eliminate some words um, within your bio. So this is a paragraph long artist bio in a long version. I've seen longer, but um, this is just to say that it can always be shorter and that's perfectly fine. So we're at 8.50. I'm gonna share some tools and then also some helpful scenarios. So some additional tools that are great uh, for keeping track of your ideas uh, is Notion. Uh, it's a great app for journaling, collecting your research, any links and and more online. So I use Notion to save images of paintings that I find inspiring. I use it to journal quick ideas when I'm on the go. And I also use it to collect any links that I, I find interesting to read. Save and keep copies of your writing uh, in different working drafts. So maybe the artist statement you wrote today, you're gonna save it. And when you're gonna work on it again tomorrow, you're gonna save it as a different version so you can compare. Um, maybe there's something you've written in the first version you like more than the second. This way you don't lose any of that information. And so I recommend kind of saving those in different folders. You have your artist statement, artist bio, plus a collection of the drawings you produce because um, you might wanna include them in a presentation. Um, use softwares like Word, Pages, Google Docs to write. So make sure it kind of checks your grammar at the same time, which is very useful. Uh, use applications like Grammarly. It's sort of like a second eye on your work to see if it makes sense. Um, and what about ChatGBT? So I don't have enough time for going over that, but I just want to say that it's not perfect. Um, the whole point about your artist statement that it is that it should sound like you. And if you ask ChatGPT, chat, GPT to write your artist statement, um, it's not gonna sound like you. It's not gonna have your voice. 
So I, I recommend not to lean on that to write your statement. Um, it'll be more personable and more understandable if you write it yourself. So helpful scenarios to improve your writing. Um, so your sketchbook or your journal, make time after creating to check in, take notes. The more notes, the more doodles you create, uh, the more items you have to reference when it comes to writing about your work. Um, so take notes as you're going on with your day and making art. Studio visits. So if you ask a friend to interview you about your work, uh, you'll find that when you're giving the answers back, you're also speaking about your artist statement. And so maybe they'll ask a question that you haven't answered in your statement. And when you do answer it, you realize that's that's something great that you can include in your statement. So take notes of the questions they ask, write down your answers. You could also be recording the conversation uh, as you have your studio visit. So you, you have an audio version of it as well. And also when you have studio visits, uh, they might advise you books, artists to see um, based on the work they see in front of them. So maybe your work reminds them about a book they've read um, or reminds them of another artist that you might find interesting. So you're already gathering materials to help your writing um, just through that visit. Similarly, uh, exhibitions with your work, when you have conversations with visitors, it's much like a studio visit. They will ask you questions after reading your statement and they will ask you about your perspectives and all these kind of conversations uh, add to your writing so keep track of your answers keep track of those conversations uh, take notes of any books artists that they recommend um, that way you can do your research on that as well and artist residencies uh, for anyone that doesn't know, an artist residency is a space where you get a chance to work on your art in a studio space amongst other artists. Sometimes there's mentorship. Um, and this is a, a great way to take advantage of studio visits and exhibition opportunities, all scenarios to speak about your work, to get feedback and reflect. So more moments to improve your writing. So we're almost at nine, and I just wanted to give a visual example of why an artist statement and bio are important and how doodling can become useful. Um, I'm a visual artist, and writing hasn't always been the easiest thing to approach. It always seemed intimidating, and so I often start by doodling first. So this is an example of where I was using doodling to create a project proposal for a art prize. Um, and that art prize was asking for a project that was text-based and related to love. And I was reading a few books. I, in this one, I read uh, The Poetics of Space by Gaston Bachelard and Liquid Love uh, by Zygmunt Bauman, which is also part of my artist statement. So I was combining these two ideas. Um, and to make sense of those two books, I doodled. So there's a concept within the book about first space, second space, third space, um, the first space being the actual, the second space being uh, interacting with the actual space and generating these feelings. And this idea of a third space being coming the memory of the first and second space. So it's this kind of combination of the, the actual space and a physical memory that took place in that space. And this was a way how I made sense of creating a project. Um, I had to communicate that project in words. But because I've had these doodles to illustrate the ideas I had in mind for the project, I had to make this project. Um, it wasn't a work that I had created. So having these doodles, explaining the thought process behind it actually made me win the prize. So I actually won the art prize through that doodling, that explanation. Um, it really helped explain the ideas behind this work that I wanted to create. So 
The work was called Let's Play Outside. It was a blanket light tent um, that was kind of a replication of creating these tents as a kid and playing inside them. Um, but on the outside, there's a, a text that says space like home. Um, this was sort of my experience, reflecting on my experience of moving 11 times in Venice uh, when I was studying and working there. Uh, there's a problem where people that rent apartments um, with Airbnb uh, decide to switch over. And so I had to move a lot when I was living there. Um, so with this project, I was kind of creating this safe space like home. And when you go inside, uh, it's lit by black light and you can doodle on a sketchbook memories that you had as happy memories that you've had in spaces um, where you felt comfortable. Uh, and this book would only be visible inside because you need the black light to see the drawings inside the book. Another example of how doodling helped uh, bring an opportunity so after winning that art prize, uh, the same location where the show took place, there was an artist residency. And uh, after speaking with them and seeing my, my artist statement, they invited me to do an artist residency uh, in Milan. So that's Via Farini. And during this artist residency, I took it as an opportunity to document my sort of artistic process that I illustrated. So here I have a the actual photograph of I took of trees with my cell phone. Two examples of the same photograph printed twice with my hacked laser printer. So you can see that it, it yields two completely different results. And then I've scanned that one of those images, enlarged it. And so you can see that this is about to be the scale of the painting. And then I've cut off all, all those white borders and I've now started to gesso it onto a canvas and then I've removed all the paper. This is the photo transferring process. And then I have the finished artwork on canvas, which I've painted on at the end as well with oil paint. So by having that sort of illustration of how I do my process, I was able to map out how would I document it with photographs. And this is now something I can use when explaining my artistic process um, for other applications, for grant applications, things like that. And one of the last examples I will share is a residency that I had at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery in Oshawa, Ontario back in 2020. Uh, this is the exhibition that went public in 2021. And for this one, I had to propose a project for the residency. And again, I went back to drawing. So trying to do a idea that I wanted to realize. And so for this one, I revisited the, the poetics of space kind of idea of memory. And I combined it with a memory of uh, my childhood of looking outside the window and sort of imaginary animating the outside world. Um, so in my mind, I was drawing on the outside. And so I have this combination of these two ideas of there being a physical space um, and you can interact with this physical space. But in the end, there's only the memory of that space and those interactions. So the project became uh, a, a temporary installation on a wall in the gallery. So this is a photo transfer on the wall of a photograph I captured of Lake Ontario. And on top of this photo transfer on the wall, there was a projected Google Jamboard. So a sort of whiteboard pr projected on top. And visitors were able to come into the gallery, connect with their smartphone or tablet and draw on top of the work. But the trick being that even if you left a drawing in the space, the next person to come in or a group of people to come in can draw on top. They can erase it. Uh, so that moment disappears. It was there for a moment and it continues on. 
In that exhibition was also this piece, which I created during the pandemic. Uh, this is a similar process. It's a photo transfer on a thermal blanket, so not a canvas. Uh, so the goal that you see in the background is the surface of a thermal blanket. And then on top of the photo transfer, I've used oil paint on top. And so during the pandemic, I had to think of alternative materials because there was a shortage of canvas and it inflated the prices. I couldn't afford it at the time. So I decided to think about other materials and test other materials. And this is what came out. And it turned out to be a, more of a success than I thought because I didn't know if it would work or not, but it did. And I ended up writing a statement specifically for this artwork and it ended up winning our art prize in Italy. But then it also uh, grabbed the attention of a curator at the Robert McLaughlin, uh, uh, sorry, the, Rich, the Richmond Art Gallery in BC. And they ended up commissioning a public artwork from that artwork uh, for Richmond, BC. And I, I'm gonna finish the presentation here, but I just wanted to add that this itself became a new challenge for me because I've never done a public artwork. So what I did do was I revisited my artist statement, um, tried to think about how could I make a public artwork connect with my artist statement. So something that would still be in line with how, how I work, but for a public space. And so after thinking about that, keeping my artist statement sort of as my thesis for the way I work, I decided to photograph the artwork with my iPhone in pieces. So I ended up taking 300 photographs with my iPhone and I ended up piecing together those 300 photographs to create this giant uh, artwork. So it went from a image captured from my phone of a sky during the pandemic uh, that was printed, photo transferred onto a blanket, and then re-photographed with my phone and pieced together, put onto a window, um, which is where the image sort of started from. It was a picture of a sky through a window.